Hey everybody, David here. This is another digital review, and today's digital review is on the Savage Worlds core supplement, the Fantasy Companion. And if you guys haven't checked out Savage Worlds yet, it's a game that I've actually really come to admire the last two to three months. I've been playing a zombie apocalypse game, been doing some Deadlands, also some Hellfrost. So I've really come to admire these rules. It's a really rule light set. It's very fast. No character is safe, no matter if you're a monster or you're a player. And if you and if you've seen in my campaigns, players die pretty frequently. So this is the Fantasy Companion, and if you have the core rule book, which this is the core rule book, you can get this in the 150 page hardback version for about $30 at your local game store or you can get it cheaper online and it also has a 190 page version which is a, a smaller soft core, soft uh, cover book, you know, soft cover book. You can get that for about 8 to $10 online or in a game store. And the core rule book has all of the rules, all of the mechanics, and a good base for all the genres of different games. Whether it be modern day, whether it is fantasy, whether it's sci-fi, whether it's horror, whether it's anything. It has, you know, things for insanity, for Cthulhu. It has chase mechanics, tons of vehicles, tons of modern day equipment, medieval times equipment. So the core book is a great base to go on. And this companion, the Fantasy Companion, is 160 pages. And this companion has nothing but fantasy components to go on top of the core rulebook to give you a really flush Savage Worlds fantasy campaign. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. This is a, a really nice, clean PDF, and the book is the same way. This book only comes in a soft back. So in, in the soft cover. And as you can see, this is broken up into five different sections. The first section is nothing but things for characters. New races, uh, new languages, uh, about custom rules for making races. There's all kinds of new edges, which are basically class features even though there are really no classes in Savage Worlds. And then there's a bunch of, uh, you know, just a bunch of new edges. And, well, really there's no hindrances, which is kind of uh, kind of weird. I, I expected to see some hindrances. So all of the hindrances you would use out of the core rulebook. And also you would use all of the edges here also. But, like I said, this 160-page uh, Fantasy Companion has, uh, I think, two or three more pages of fantasy-related uh, type of, of of edges. Now the sec next section is a is a really nice section on gear, and it talks about uh, it goes more into depth with with more types of items, more types of equipment. Gives you the the nice uh, you know descriptions for everything. Talks about the new armor, uh, siege machinery, the mechanics for that. Uh, talks about building keeps, fortifications, and the rules for that, and what it takes to, to keep them up and running. And then uh, the next chapter is the Arcana section, which is basically goes into deities, more powers, which are called spells in Savage Worlds. Well, they're, they're called powers in Savage Worlds, but we know them as, as spells from other games like D&D and Pathfinder. Uh, and then it goes into the different types of trappings and how you can customize those powers into your own liking with a lot of different variances that you can do with them. It's really nice. Then there's a really extensive, this is what I really like about about this Fantasy Companion is the Treasure Index. And this is uh, 50 pages of nothing but magic items, all kinds of effects that you can create your own magic items, all of the tables to get the magic items, and a very large section of named items that has all of the descriptions. It's really nice. And then last but not least, you know, what would a fantasy companion be without 50 pages of monsters? I mean, it's really nice. There's not a whole lot. I think there's, there's I think about five or six pages of, of monsters in this setting, the, in, in the core book. But it's spread out between beast, fantasy, and some sci-fi, and some other modern day stuff. But this, this uh, you know, bestiary here within the fantasy companion deals with nothing but 
dragons, variances of the dragons and whatnot. So let's go ahead and start looking at this. And you can see that on just about every page, there's art. And that's one thing about, you know, one thing that everybody always thinks of when they think of about a tabletop game or a D&D game or a D&D type of game is a lot of people like to look through the books just at the art. And, and, and you know, Savage Worlds' as Fantasy Companion is no different than, you know, pretty much any other game. So this is uh, all of the races where it goes into the, the half elves, the half orcs, and you know the special recautions and the saurians. Uh, here's the the languages, and here's here's a really nice couple pages on how to make the races. If you have some type of fantasy race, like maybe a tiefling or maybe a dragonborn, or you know something a drow, any any kind of fantasy race, these are the rules in a couple, you know, about a page and a half that you can do to create your own race. Uh, here's a couple pages of new edges, which like I was saying, the edges are pretty much like class features in any other game that you've played. And here's uh, a, a, lo a lot of good stuff. There's three, four pages of that stuff. Now here's the new gear. Everything from adventuring gear, there's some weapons, some armor. Here's land movement, uh, special rules. And then it goes into all the different descriptions of everything. Here's the new weapons from Bastard Sword to Orcish Combat Axe. Has all of the stats, the cost, any kind of notes that come with the uh, the weapons. Here's the, the new armor, the Siege Warfare. As you can see, there's you know plenty of art in this book. And I, I, I really like that... And one other side note here, I really like, not only I've done a review on the science fiction companion and the horror companion already, and I, I really like how they have these PDFs set up. And when you buy these PDFs from, from Pinnacle or uh, Drive Through RPG, at the very beginning, you can actually turn the background off and you can have a very printer-friendly, very nice printer-friendly PDF. So you can actually turn off all the graphics and print just nothing but text, which is really nice and which a, a lot of uh, PDFs should really do. Because if you don't watch it, I mean, you'll burn through a ton of cartridge in one or two PDFs. So, all right, to get back to uh, showing you guys, here's all the siege engines and uh, all of the different actions and, you know, uh, the rules for using siege weapons in your game. Uh, here's more siege engines, fortifications, modifications, uh, fortifications. Uh, I mean, it just very it goes into a, a lot of depth into this fantasy companion. Uh, what just like I said, it just doesn't have in this book. Here's the uh, the spells, which is a lot of deity based stuff, which are for the clerics or for the healing types. And, it, you know, it goes into the gods of the, the sun, the thieves, the wars. Here's some new arcane backgrounds. You have to have an arcane background to use any kind of magic. Or maybe, as an example, a hedge magic like in Hellfrost. Which is basically making one-use items like potions or powders or, or trinkets. So here's all the trappings. Trappings in Savage World are how you customize your spell. So if you have a, uh, a cold spell, here's all kinds of different examples that you can customize your spell with. Darkness spells, acid spells, fire, electricity, I mean, it goes uh, into depth. Here's the, the new, all of the new powers. There's uh, quite a few pages of these. And these are the new powers, a.k.a. spells, is what you're used to hearing. So it, the Fantasy Companion, everybody, really is nice. It goes into a, a lot of depth, and, and I truly, truly like this about it. So here's uh, 50 pages of treasure. This is the next section. Um, I really like this. This goes into using magic items, how you are able to determine if it's a magic item in Savage Worlds. You just automatically know that the magic that the item is magical if you're holding it. There's no identification process, there's no detect magic process, you know, but it's up to the DM to where, or the game master in Savage Worlds, as if you want this person to go on a quest or maybe seek some kind of ancient scholar to, to determine the full range of these items capabilities. And then here, you know, here's treasure tables, all kinds of, you know, just all kinds of treasure tables. DMs love that kind of stuff uh, because it does save a lot of time. And here's all kinds of named items. And then it starts listing, you know, 
all of the different items in alphabetical order. Uh, here's all kinds of uh, magic items. Just tables and tables of, of what you can give your players. Everything from uh, rings to ranged weapons to melee weapons to miscellaneous items. And here's the ta here's actually the skills that you can actually make your own you know you can have some items have skill check bonuses you can have some give you a power maybe there's a power attached to that magic item maybe there's skill bonuses but the fantasy companion really goes into depth because there is such a a very low number uh, there's low numbers in this game even much lower than D&D 5th edition and when you get start giving the players too many bonuses it you know the fantasy companion and the core book actually goes into explaining that it's uh, kind of detrimental to the game so uh, you really have to be careful on what you're giving the players and that's why it recommends to to use skill check bonuses or to give powers or give some other uh, certain feats instead of your traditional plus one to hit and plus one to damage type of items so here's a, a lot more different clothing, all kinds of uh, bracers of agility, boots of speed, um, all kinds of potions, jewelry. I mean, this has everything. And then here's pretty much the 50 pages is basically explaining what all these items are and the bonuses, the effects, any kind of powers. It's really nice. This is a true companion. I mean, this is not full of... This is not full of junk. This is actually a really good book. Uh, in fact, out of all of the companion guides, this is probably my my favorite. Even though I really like the sci-fi, uh, the sci-fi companion also, I really like that. Uh, I would say this is probably my favorite companion book. And I wish this was in a hardback because I'd love to have the hardback. So you can see here's all kinds of new potions, all kinds of rings. So as you can see, this is like a, uh, you know, a, three four books and ones like a uh, like maybe an alternative player's handbook maybe a, a, another maybe a uh, maybe like an adventurer's ball uh, adventurer's vault type of book or maybe the ultimate equipment type of book and a, and a monster manual or bestiary all in one I mean this is this is really nice and then it even goes into cursed relics cursed items I mean this, this has everything how to play intellect, uh, you know, very intellectual types of items, uh, have conversations with them. Here's all kinds of relics like the, the crown of bones or the gem of unlimited uh, wealth, the soul drinker sword, and then it goes into the bestiary where there's another 50 pages of nothing but NPCs. Uh, monsters, villains, and then it also lets you know which types of monsters are the wild cards and which types, you know, which monsters are the normal monsters. So, uh, for example, the warrior. This is a, a pretty, probably a pretty. Uh, this is a pretty nice. It's got a D10 strength, D10 uh, D10 vigor, a D8 fighting. So this is probably a mid-level type of character. Uh, and then you can see the chieftain down below how it has this joker that means that uh, it is a a wild card which means that it would get the wild die which is the extra d6 on every roll much like what the characters get so there are you know basically uh, elite type of characters and normal type well elite types of monsters and then normal types of monsters there's all kinds of variants for the dragons and it tells you you know there's the wing uh, the wing buffet the swamp dragon death dragon ice dragon magic sandstorm uh, and then all kinds of different uh, it just goes into your traditional elementals and you know there's all kinds of gargoyles frost wolves ghost goblins several different types of goblins which is a good thing I, I like to see creatures that you know and and especially I, I'll say Hellfrost does a really good job with that uh, giving a lot of different you know level ranges of creatures say orcs they'll have ten different orcs in their bestiary or ten different goblins or and it's I, I really like that you know manticores medusas mercenaries mermaids Mossman, the Mummy Lord. You gotta have a Mummy Lord in every game. Nagas, 
nightmares, octopus. These here's the 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 ogres and the orcs, the orc chieftain. So this is pretty much everything that you need, folks, to play a, f a fantasy Savage Worlds game. All you need is the core rulebook, and all you need is the fantasy companion. And that's that's really all that you need, folks. Two books, they'll cost you about uh, probably about twenty dollars, twenty five dollars for both of them. Piece of cake, hours of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed the view. Please uh, feel free to leave a comment down below if you're a fantasy uh, fan, a fantasy fan of Savage Worlds. Leave a comment. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Take it easy.